Welcome back to Gloved Up Garage. The original issue that the owner, previous owner was having has risen again. And I have verified that it's not the transmission range sensor because I've got two known good sensors. I bench tested them according to the Ford schematic. They're both working correctly. That only leads me to believe that the harness between that transmission range sensor and the relay up here in the box has got a break or a split or something going on with it. The harness on this car, it's tucked up really close to the trans tunnel and it's kind of hard to see. So I went ahead and I took off, there's an upper cow piece, which is this piece right here sitting on the Lincoln. Then there's a lower cow piece, which actually has the wiper mechanism. And I'm glad that I took this off. You can see there's a lot of debris and stuff, but something that I noticed is that stuff right there. And then a big ball of stuff that I pulled out and threw in the garbage can there. That's a nest from either a mouse, a chipmunk, or something small. It's pretty much the only thing you can get down inside of this. There's not a whole lot of large openings in uh, this upper or the lower cow. So I also noticed something, and I'd looked it over in the past and I didn't think much about it, but this harness right here has been repaired. That's electrical tape, though it is not from the factory. Now the Marauders had a common issue of wearing the harness right here on this side of the head. The harness goes down the back side, goes over, wraps over to the other side. I haven't quite figured out where the transmission harness connects because it is a separate harness that does connect into this somewhere. But this is the main engine harness here that runs over to these plugs right here. I believe it's that one is the one that it connects to, but there is a couple of smaller plugs over here. And I'll get to those later, I'll check those out. But basically I need to pull that harness out. I'm gonna have to get all of the, the covering off of it and see if there's a break in the wire somewhere. It could be as simple as uh, a break in that wire right at the connector, which I kind of twisted it around a couple of different times, which would explain why it would sometimes start and then sometimes it wouldn't. And then now it just seems to be completely broken. Like it's, it's just not one to start at all. I can jump it in the uh, relay box and it'll fire right up. So I know it's an issue going from that box back down to that sensor. And that's the sensor mounted on the side of the transmission. There's a plug that goes to it, which is in the back. And I've got it all plugged in. I've got it aligned. It's really hard to see because the catalytic converter is right here. You can see that O2 sensor. So it's hard to see the alignment marks and they're actually on the top side. You can, I can swing this up here and you can kind of see there's a mark right here on the sensor and then it won't focus, of course, because there's not very good lighting. Oh, that's a little better. There's a mark there on the, this collar actually turns with the transmission shifter. And then there's actually a mark here on the sensor itself. So you can align these two marks together. Right now I've got it in park, so it won't be aligned, but I had it in neutral and it was lined up perfect. That, that leads me to believe that there's just, there's something broken between the plug for the sensor and then going up to the engine bay, which is up that way. You can see the mice have just tore all of this fiberglass insulation apart. So it's uh, it's lovely working down here with all this stuff falling on my, my face and uh, on my hands and stuff. I'm, my arms are pretty itchy. So that's why I had to get that cowl off so I could look and see where this harness snakes up into the engine bay. Up there somewhere is where it snakes. It goes over top of the trans and then goes over to the other side. So I'm going to have to get the other side up in the air too. But this is, uh, this is definitely no fun. Hopefully this permanently fixes this issue that I'm having. After many, many hours of chasing wires, and like I just talked about, chasing wires from this plug up into the engine bay, the, the harness actually goes, I'm over on the driver's side, goes across the top of the trans, and then comes over um, basically right at the firewall on the passenger side. And what I have found, this is the wire that gets the signal through this plug back up to the relay in the relay box. It's a white wire with a pink tracer. And with this in there, you can see where I've probed it right here behind this little rubber boot. With the key on, I had my son in the car turning the key 
I've got power coming through the wire going from the ignition switch through the fuse and into this plug and then normally with this transmission in neutral or park it would then send that signal through the switch back through this wire and up to the relay to start the car. I was getting no signal on the outside of this wire you know, right there where I had probed it, basically right there by my thumb, uh, where there's a little hole in the insulation. So I went ahead and pulled this out of the plug. I put my multimeter into the hole right there in the plug where that wire went, made contact with the pin on the switch, and sure enough, I got a signal. So that tells me that there's an issue with this terminal right here. And initially what I thought was because it's hollow and it may be kind of hard to see, but there is um, like a little tab inside of this hollow spot that puts pressure on the pin at the switch. And I thought, well, maybe it's just not getting good enough signal. So I came in from the other side right here and tried to put some pressure down on that tab and hopefully get it to make good contact. It, it just won't. I've, I've tried cleaning this with contact cleaner and then putting it back in, putting the switch back on and still getting no signal through this terminal. So this terminal is no good. This is what's been causing my problem all along is that this terminal is just not making a good contact. It's either got some corrosion or too much clearance on the inside and that's what not getting the signal through up to the starter relay. That has been the issue this entire time. And, and let me tell you, it was very difficult to figure that out. Basically out of frustration, I came under here and started probing this wire. I'm like, I know that the car's in neutral. I know I had that switch lined up. There's no reason I should not be getting signal through this. And eventually just pulled it out to check it and see what was going on. With the original switch up here on the workbench and a couple of test leads hooked up to the multimeter, I've got this in resistance mode with an audible signal. So basically it'll tell you if you're getting a good uh, good signal on your circuit or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got that terminal pulled out and I'm gonna slide that over the pin and I'm gonna move this around a little bit. Now it's fully engaged on that pin right now and I've got a good signal. But watch what happens or listen what happens as I start to kind of move this around. You hear that break in the signal? So what's going on is that's sitting just right inside of that connector where it's making contact right now. But all it takes is me moving this a little bit left or right, up or down. And that terminal is on that pin. I mean, it's just, it's moving around on that pin. I'm not pulling the terminal out, it's fully engaged. I'm just literally moving this wire back and forth. And it's giving me a break in the signal. I went ahead and unplugged at that time. Those little intervals of where you do not have signal is what's causing my car not to start. And it's so intermittent. This little pin, just the expansion of the metal when it's hot out, and the contraction when it's cold, is enough to lose connection inside of this plug and cause that car not to start. So what I have done, Ford actually sells a pigtail assembly to go on here, the plug-in, you can replace the end of it. But as you saw in that previous clip, I've only got about this much room to work with under the car. I just don't have enough room to pull that harness all the way down, go through and replace each individual wire. I know my other wires are working because I'm getting signal to this and I'm getting signal out of it in other gears. Um, obviously when it's in drive, this circuit does not operate, but there is another circuit in here that does tell the car that it's in drive. Those are working just fine. It's only this park and neutral situation that the wire, the power goes through this wire in this terminal that's caused me an issue. So what I'm gonna do I could rob this off of the Lincoln. They use um, the same plug, the same sensor, the same color wire. I could rob that out of Lincoln. I don't want to. I don't want to get under that car and cut any of the wiring on that car. I've ordered that pigtail assembly from Ford. 
Unfortunately, when they ship those and when they make them, all of the wires that are in here, which there's 11 wires, they're all black. They do not have, um, you know, the color-coded wire like what you see from the factory. So what I'll have to do is just look at that plug when it gets here, pull this one wire and this one terminal out of that plug, and then splice it into the harness of my car on the Marauder, and then plug this up and hope that it works. The part that I needed just arrived, and it's this pigtail right here. There's the part number from Ford. This is the plug that goes into that transmission range sensor. And all I need to do is get this little yellow piece off, and then I'll be able to pop out the wire that I need. Like I said, it comes with just black wire. It doesn't come with uh, any of the color-coded wires, like the harness that's on the car. And then they do include heat shrink and these terminals so that you can uh, crimp them together. They recommend in their little instructions that you solder everything. Um, with this not being a resistance-based circuit, meaning it's not measuring any kind of signal, it's just a pass-through of a 12 volt. So it's not resistance like a temperature or oil or anything like that that, that measures resistance. This is just a pass-through signal. So in this case, I can get away with just uh, cutting this wire and putting in like a, a, a butt splice terminal or something like that. I'll use one with some heat shrink on it. I've got some over in my cabinet, but that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna deep end this and then I'll come right back. After pulling out the yellow locking tab, I could get the little screwdriver down inside of here and pop out one of the terminals. And something I just realized that the original plug has 11 pins in it there, there's a hole for the 12th on the original plug, but there is no actual wire uh, in the original plug. This one actually came with 12, so in this case, I've got an extra terminal. I can try this out, and if for whatever reason I have issues in the future, I can go back and splice this entire plug on, and it'll still work with the factory stuff. This should be the fix. I just used the multimeter to verify that I was getting good signal through this terminal. Uh, it is nice and tight. You can see how closed up that is in comparison to how open the original one is. You can see it; it's hard to focus there. It's kind of spread apart. And that's part of the issue that, it, that I was getting is that this was moving around inside of that plug and causing me to not get a signal. Also, it has this little rubber boot that goes over the wire. That's already pre-crimped onto the new terminal. I will cut this back a little bit longer than the one that I took off to give me some extra room uh, to account for the splice that I'm gonna have to use. Back under the car, I've got the plug all put back together. I've got the wire back in the plug. I uh, went ahead and used that heat shrink terminal. And now I'm just gonna fight with the zoom on my camera and the focus trying to see what I'm doing under this car. Basically, I've just put a little bit of blue Loctite on these two bolts that hold that range sensor on. Um, that keeps it from loosening up once you've made your adjustment. Right here on the sensor itself, you can see there's a line there and a line there on that bushing. And hopefully it's in focus because I can't really see it that well. But with those two aligned, the transmission's actually in neutral. I've got the e-brake on and I've got the wheel chalked. So important to say that while the car is up in the air and obviously I'm underneath of it. So with that being said, those two marks are aligned. This bolt and this bolt are tight. Our plug is in. I'm going to slide out from underneath the car and see if it'll start. All right, here's the moment of truth. Car's in neutral. I'm going to turn the key. Fuel pump's primed. All right, we still don't have signal. I'm hitting that key and nothing's happening. All right, let's see what's going on. So what I've done is removed the starter relay out there under the hood. I'm in the car and I've put a test light in the plug going from that white with a pink tracer wire up there to the relay. And what this will tell me is if that relay itself is bad or if I'm not getting signal to it. So I'll go ahead and turn the, the ignition switch into the start position. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit this key. 
nothing. That should be lighting up every time I'm turning this key, which it's not. So we've still got an issue with a signal somewhere. I'm gonna get back under the car and we'll put a test light on that uh, on that pink with white wire or white with <laughs> pink wire and see if we're getting signal through the switch. Hopped back under the car and checked everything out again and I wasn't getting any signal from the ignition switch to the transmission range sensor. So I was not getting any power through it at all. So I pulled this fuse after checking it. This is the number nine fuse, a five amp fuse. This is the one that gets um, power from the ignition switch and then sends it under the vehicle. And you can see the fuse is intact. There, it is not broken at all. But when I put my multimeter on here and tested these two terminals, I showed voltage in one terminal and not the other. That tells me I'm not getting power through this fuse. So I replaced that with another fuse and then test it again. And I was still not getting voltage through the transmission range sensor. So I went ahead and pulled the terminal out of that plug to check it. And what you can see is that that terminal is all kinds of messed up and bent. So this is likely the originating cause of me not getting a signal completely through that transmission range sensor. With this one being opened up as well, it's not gonna receive a signal if it's getting a weak signal from a very distorted terminal. So I went ahead and replaced both of these terminals with uh, terminals left over or that came in this pigtail assembly. Uh, this is a divider that was in that original plug also. And this that my thumbnail is pointing at, this third from the right, that is where that pink, uh, the white wire with the pink tracer goes. And this is where the brown wire with the pink tracer goes. And it's hard to tell, but both of those are opened up quite a bit more than all the other holes in this divider. So I went ahead and took the one out of that pigtail and put it in there. I'm happy to say that it solved the issue. The car is starting up and running flawless. So just to show that it's fixed, I'm gonna reach in here and hit the key. It starts right up with no issues. Not that there ever really was an issue with the engine running, it was just that I couldn't get it to start because of that electrical issue. So now that that's all taken care of, hopefully that was a permanent fix for this. If not, the next step would be to actually pull that transmission wiring harness and either replace it with a new harness or it's possible it has another broken wire up in the harness somewhere. That'll be an uh, episode for a future <laughs> endeavor because the engine and the trans would almost have to come out in order to access that harness. The easiest way that I can figure to actually pull that transmission harness would be to take the drive shaft out um, and drop the transmission cross member down and get enough access to the top side of the transmission where I could go through and hit all the plugs and all of the um, locations that secure the harness to the transmission. That is a lot of work. If you've never pulled a cross member in one of these cars before, uh, that cross member is actually wedged into the frame. And w from the factory, when they tighten the bolts that hold those cross members in, it actually tightens the frame, a couple of ears on the frame, and pinches that cross member into place. Uh, after years and years of being in that position, it doesn't really like to come free, and it uh, is very difficult to get out. I have broken a couple of pry bars on my previous Marauder trying to get that cross member out to remove the engine and transmission. So not really something I wanna tackle. It can be done with a little bit of heat and uh, a lot of force, it'll come loose. But again, just to access a, a transmission wiring harness, it's a little overkill. So that'll 
come way down the road. If anything ever happens to the engine and transmission in this car, it's something that I know that I'll address when it's out. I'll go through the harness and check it out. As a temporary fix, if I have any future issues with this, I know where those plugs are over there on that uh, passenger side. And what I'll probably do is go back up under the car, access those two wires, run two wires separate of the harness that's already there, up out of the way somewhere under the car, and then go ahead and run them over to uh, either where that harness connects over in this area, and then it meets up with the engine harness and comes over to this area. Or I might run them directly to the fuse box and just bypass the, the, the wiring of the car, so to speak, until it can be addressed in the future. Those are the things you really have to think about when you're working on these older cars. Is it really worth all the effort to fix it 100% factory dealer correct? Or can you do something that may not be, so to speak, factory correct, but is still the correct way to repair a broken circuit? Uh, that is a judgment call that you have to make on your own. And it depends upon the car that you're working on and your skill level. I have the skill that I could pull that harness out and repair it, but do I really want to? No, I don't. That's going to be an entire weekend of working on this car to get that wire harness out when it could take me literally two or three hours just to hook up to that sensor and run my wires up, if it's even that long. That pretty much covers it for this episode. We got the Marauder running. Figured out this electrical issue that's plagued me for a year now that I've owned this vehicle. Even talked to the previous owner about it, told him what I had found. He was super relieved to find out that it wasn't something really serious, uh, that it was a, a fairly simple fix. It just took a lot of time to get to that point to make that repair. Lincoln it is still here. We've got an appointment later this month for another frame shop, hopefully the last one. And I will get this up on the trailer or have it towed into Louisville to that frame shop. Have them do the pull on that so we can continue on. With it out of the way, uh, I'm probably going to move the Marauder outside and start cutting in the parts pretty soon. That way, as soon as it's back, we're ready to get back on that Lincoln and get it reassembled and do all the body work on the outside of the panels. So that pretty much covers it for this episode of Gloved Up Garage. Definitely appreciate all the likes, all the views, the comments. Keep those coming, and we'll catch you on the next one. Stay gloved up.